So this is Gibson, and um, we had a poetry contest, I guess, gosh, it's been several months ago is when my channel hit 25,000 views, and there were a few different categories of the poetry contest, but there was one that was uh, essentially the online um, viewer choice. So I had all of the, the viewers uh, watch a whole bunch of videos and choose, and then we had a couple of different um, couple of different uh, iterations of that, and it narrowed down and in the end, Gibson was the winner of that, and uh, she's here to say hi to us and maybe read some poetry. Hi, Gibson. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Mm, I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> um, I never yeah. do either. Yeah, I, I don't even know where to begin with that. Um, I guess I have... Uh, an interest in writing. I have an interest in art and expression and um, movement. I really like to dance. Mm. Um, I like to garden. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like to swim and drink tea. And um, yeah, I think that's All like the, the important things. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really like going to the river and just sitting for long times and. Mm. Um, watching the river. I don't know. <laughs> Beautiful. So the funny story is when um, you won this contest, I sent you an email and I said, you won a meteor. And then I, I announced it somewhere on one of my videos, but I never heard back from you. Probably I, I always wondered, like, maybe that was just an email you don't use anymore or something. But uh, I don't know, five months later or something, you finally sent me an email and said, oh, sorry, I was, where were you? I was living in the jungle in India. Um, yeah, basically like no service, no electricity. So I didn't have, I never saw the email until I got back. That's wild. Tell us yeah. about that. <laughs> um, it was kind of like an accident that I ended up there. I had booked a hotel room in Arambal, India, and I arrived and they were like, sorry, the hotel room is taken. You can't stay here. So I ended up moving onto the beach and living with a bunch of like travelers and musicians and beautiful people. And from the beach, I wandered around in the jungle and I found a community of mostly people from Kazakhstan and Russia. And I ended up just living with them <laughs> wow. for about two months I was in the jungle. Yeah. Wow. It's like an intentional community or, or were they scientists was, or what? It was just uh, scientists. Uh, it was just travelers, like people that had wanted to live in nature, I guess. And they just found a space in the jungle and it's India. So it's kind of like free. And um, yeah, people had set up mosquito nets and tents and yoga mats for sleeping. And yeah. Wow. Yeah, was it, was it hard to adjust to sleeping in the jungle? Honestly, I slept really well. <laughs> mm. I slept on like three yoga mats, like a stack of three yoga mats and mm -hmm. um, slept underneath the mosquito net that I got for like 250 rupees, which is like really cheap. And I made some like amazing, beautiful friends. And yeah, it was, it was really cool. That is so wild. How fun. Yeah. Every morning I would wake up and just be like, I can't believe that this is what is going on. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How it cool. was really cool. Yeah. yeah. I, had you ever lived in other like rainforest jungle areas or anything like that? No, so this is the first time that I lived like in nature so fully. And there was a freshwater spring for bathing and drinking water. We cooked a lot of like rice. Um, one of my friends tried to go fishing in the ocean and like catch fish for us. <laughs> but we just kind of bought, bought food and cooked it there. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. What a cool experience. Yeah, it was it was truly like amazing <laughs> was it hard to come back yeah I was pretty pretty like heartbroken when I got back because I just mm -hmm. felt like everything that had just happened was just like gone like it never mm -hmm. even existed it mm -hmm. felt like I was living this complete full reality and when I got back it was just like where did wow. it go yeah I was wow. pretty heartbroken for like a month <laughs> yeah wow. like reverse culture shock almost <laughs> yeah, in a way. And I, I mean, just living so close to the earth was really magical. Like my body and the way that it was like interacting with the earth as the earth was really, really magical. It was very cool. Mm. 
just to be like that, like in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. cool. Yeah. Beautiful. There's a, there's a really, this is a bit off topic, but it's an interesting point. There's a um, documentary called, um, I think it's called living on a dollar a day or $1 a day or something. And these two undergraduate guys were, um, getting a degree in, um, I think it was economics and they, they were trying to model what it's like for people who live off the, the equivalent of a U.S. dollar per day, something like very low income, relatively speaking. Um, so they were trying to model it, and they were looking at different places, like basically people who live in um, jungles and uh, pl places where they, they live very, very close to, to the land and to nature and kind of you know interact with nature in a very intimate way with food and gathering, all of it. And um, they thought, well, the best way to do it is to go there and like live there. So they did. And I, they didn't do it for very long. It might've been a month or a couple of months, but they essentially paid themselves a dollar a day, like equivalent. And they did it the way that people live there would get it where it's like every day they would open an envelope and it might be a dollar, it might be $2, it might be $0, but it equivalent, the equivalent was a dollar a day over time. And, um, when they, and so the documentary is just about them going through it. And at first they were kind of like, having trouble adjusting. They're like, Oh my God, there's, there's no safety net here. Like there's not, we just live in the moment. And, you know, they were talking to people about well, what do you do if you need surgery and all these things. And kind of like mm. the, the community just gets together and helps people and supports people in the best oh, way wow. they can, but they don't have like the safety oh. nets we have like health insurance and they don't have a lot of possessions at all, you know, things like that. But as they stay there, they realize like, wow, these people are really much happier. <laughs> they they just notice, they they just seem genuinely happier than, than a lot of people like in Western countries who have actually a lot of wealth. And yeah. it was really a paradigm shift for them. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. <laughs> and I also hmm. realized that like security is kind of like an illusion. Like, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, it really <laughs> is. It's, it's hard yeah. to see through that unless... Well, unless I guess, unless your sense of self goes away because <laughs> there's nothing to hold that illusion or just live in an experience where it's like, obviously, yeah, wow. And I think that's actually the cause of a lot of suffering is just being so distanced from life, but only through this, like through our illusion of all the things, security. Yeah. Really yeah. Cause you're kind of like holding on to like, I need to keep myself safe. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Living in the jungle for some reason brought about this shift where I was like, I thought that I was like secure when I had my own house and my own space and it was like more controlled environment, but like anything could have happened at any time just yeah. as equally as here. So, yep. and in a way I felt more secure because I had deep relationships that were like kind of more grounding than like a house, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So well said. Yeah. Well, um, maybe do would you like to read us a poem? I would love to read a poem. Yes. All right. Let's yeah. do it. Cool. Should I read the poem that I submitted for the poetry contest or a different I think poem? I think you should read that one. Okay, cool. Then I will <laughs> do that. The title has kind of I don't even know what the title is at this point in time. It was falling in love and now I'm playing with maybe calling it like mythology of the Big Bang or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, um, I will begin. When we made the promise to dream, we were drunk on possibility. But drunk promises are still promises, usually pretty good promises. So we jumped into the promise to dream. Into this dream, we fell. We grew bodies on the way down and we're still falling met with just this, whatever this may be. Peeling toenail polish on the back porch while crickets carry rightness more than any song on Spotify could. Children shouting nonsense in the distance, a lavender, sigh that's, a lavender sky that sighs, a singular puff of vapor, a haze of place and time so cosmically coordinated, a lawn chair resting between forever and forever for a moment enfolded with these eternities, just with my gaze. Sweet daydreams and pen scratches and cat scratches and scratched up lottery tickets, you won 15 bucks and the whole universe is made from scratch because everything traces back to nothing. And how could that be is a question that is only answered with laughter, but dressed in tears sometimes. 
because we had to know ourselves through the inverse of ourself. We knew that love was painful, but at the time that we jumped into the dream, we didn't know what pain was. And in the drunkenness of being ourself, we knew we could handle everything. In the drunkenness of being ourself, we jumped into a dream to know the beauty of ourself through contrast, to understand limitlessness through limits, to understand total unknowing through knowledge. And I suppose too, because we were curious, playful, drunk enough to jump into possibility and drunk enough to fall, fall in love. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's beautiful. Yeah. Is, is there, um, I've heard it several times because I've watched your, the video recording of it several times to, to kind of, um, review things and all that, but, um, yeah. it's such a beautiful poem Thank and, you. um, well, maybe I, I guess I'll ask you, I don't want to give you my response necessarily. I'd ask you what, what brought it about? Uh, was it, is there anything specific behind it or did it just kind of come or? I was just sitting on the back porch and, um, I had a notebook and I just had the urge to write. So I started writing. <laughs> Beautiful. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And the way it looks on the page, I don't have it with me, but it's basically written in like a spiral because my handwriting and like, it's so messy and it's just <laughs> oh i love it how yeah. cool yeah. yeah beautiful so um and had you written a bunch of poetry before or you said you were a writer did did you write prose poetry or yeah i mean i've always like kept a journal with just like mm -hmm. poems all throughout kind of so mm -hmm. yeah yeah and some poems just like i'm sitting there and it's like okay it's time to write so that was kind of how this one came about. Mm -hmm. You can just feel it coming. Yeah. I just was like, oh yeah, I got to, I got to get a notebook. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. Do you, have, do you have any others to share? I have one more that I wrote like a few weeks ago that I would love oh. to share. Oh, we'd love to hear it. Cool. Um, it's called Road Trip Pea Break. And it's also called um, Where Does Innocence Make Its Home? So I will begin. I love the I love the two <laughs> titles. That's really cool. I can do I can never choose the title. It's always like I want like 10 different titles. So love it. This is Road Trip Pea Break. Concentrating while beholding the taste of an orange is a good way to forgive everything that's ever haunted you via memory or anticipation. Queen Anne's lace flowers growing all along the highway in early July is also an unconquerable path of forgiveness. Going west, stopped on Highway 250 for a pea break, he picks one of the white and certain flowers. In the car, he hands it to me. This is infinity, he says. Something glows in me that wordlessly says in reply, it is, isn't it? This delicate flower is infinity more than it is anything else. The same glow presides while I'm tasting an orange. More infinity than fruit, more miracle than matter, more compost than cosmic, or more cosmic than compost. And the hand offering me that white and certain flower is playful poetry as much as it is muscular motion. That quality of unconquerable forgiveness found in the innocence of oranges. Where is it? It doesn't dwell in history, even if you take it all the way back to the Big Bang. It can't dwell in words, even if you get all of the finest poets on the job. And it doesn't dwell in thought, even if you think only of oranges and flowers for three years in a row. That quality of unconquerable forgiveness in the infinity that's blooming all along the highway in early July. It's far too immediate, far too intimate for me to say another word. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I was on the cosmic road trip. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cosmic road trip. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thanks Nothing for happened. sharing. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting me share. Yeah. Well, someday we can maybe have a chat and have like talk a little bit more about you and your your past and all that if you want to and you know you're kind of your 
storyline, more intimate stuff about how the spiritual process plays out for you. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I've really like been inspired by Violet Violet's poetry book. It's uh, so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've had multiple times while reading it that I'm just like have to stop and just like, wow, it's it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, they started her poems like started coming right after awakening they just started coming like full force they would just she would just wake up in the middle of the night and write one down and read it and i was just like whoa those are those are like Where really a different from? order of magnitude of poetry i mean the poet the poetic aspect of them is well done but there's still like a powerful transmission that comes through yeah um, absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah her book is gorgeous too like she spent a lot of time uh, like pictures the and yeah the physical the physical like copy of the book is just so good to hold mm. yeah she'll be happy to hear you said that yeah. <laughs> yeah all right well thanks so much uh for touching base um maybe we can talk in the future again sometime and thanks for reading your poems they're gorgeous i will send you your meteor piece here which um i've showed it yeah it's so cool like it's a it's a chunk of an That's actual good. meteor yep and i can tell you the name i don't have it right on the forefront of my brain but i can tell you the name of the actual meteor it is it's a kind of well-known meteor and they've machined it so you can see all of the way that the metallic deposits like accumulated in the meteor it's really cool how did they like get a meteor onto like wow i know right <laughs> i don't what? know i um i i went to a um like a mineral shop that's like a pretty well-established mineral shop and i was just looking around and they have a case of meteors and i was looking at all these meteors and i was like oh my god i gotta get one of those you know I'm like, what am i gonna do with a meteor i'm like i'll give it away for the poetry contest that's awesome um that's and so... i fell in love with this one because they have they have ones that are not machined you know that are just chunks of rock and they're, they're cool because they're meteors but they're they look like chunks of rock but this one's machined and it's like oh my gosh you can see like you would never see something like this formed um, let me get it in. Yeah. You would never see something like this formed inside a rock on the earth because they don't form that way. They they form through like lava and stuff. This oh, forms wow. through like crystal, I don't know, crystallized metallic pieces or something. It's really neat. That is really neat. It yeah. Is, yeah. I'm going to love to like put it on my bookshelf and just yeah. behold it. <laughs> <laughs> something from outer space, from who yeah. knows where and when. I think they, you can read about it and kind of learn a little bit about where it might have come from and stuff. But anyway. Very cool. Sweet. Well, it's really lovely to meet you. It's like truly like awesome. Nice Just to meet you too. Because I always <laughs> watch and listen to your podcast and watch your videos. So yeah. Yeah. It's really yeah. Cool. yeah, it was a pleasure. Uh and um do you have any like resources, website, places people can read your poetry or anything you want to post? If you if you don't, that's fine. But at this point I just have an Instagram that I okay. sometimes um share things on so yeah perfect we'll put that we'll put that under the video so people can watch okay, it sweet. sweet awesome awesome all right thanks so much gibson thank you so much for yeah. everything <laughs> you're welcome yeah thank you have a good day you too bye all right bye-bye